Do you wanna cook dinner tonight? Good, because neither do I. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys what I make for dinner when I absolutely do not want to cook. I'm gonna use some processed food in this video. So if that offends you, I'm sorry. So we're starting out with a super easy meal of barbecue chicken sandwiches and some fries. And I also prepped some coleslaw earlier in the week. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. I don't know what it was this past few weeks. I've been so tired. I don't know if it's just, I'm working too much. I'm not getting enough sleep. Is it my thyroid? Is it my iron? Is it daylight savings time? Who knows? We all like to play this, this fun game, right? So anyway, I put my fries in the oven and then I took my chicken breasts and I cut them in half lengthwise. So they would be a little bit thinner. I'm just seasoning them with some barbecue rub. You can use anything you have on hand. We're actually going to be cooking these uh, partially in a skillet and then we're going to finish them in the oven with some barbecue sauce. But I do like to make sure that I season the chicken breasts really well obviously that's going to give it a lot of flavor while it's cooking so i have a stainless steel skillet here this is actually because i can transfer this into the oven and i'll show you how i do that here in a little bit but i'm just browning these chicken breasts on both sides and like i said we are going to put this in the oven so you don't have to cook them through right away you do want to get some color on either side and then once they're mostly cooked through you can just add any barbecue sauce on top that you'd like you can also do this with other sauces if you have like a teriyaki glaze that you like or buffalo sauce or anything like that, it definitely works. So just pour the barbecue over the top and then I'm just gonna take this pan and slide it right into the oven. Here is the coleslaw that I prepped earlier in the week when I did meal prep on the weekend. This is the coleslaw recipe that I always use. It is the KFC coleslaw recipe, so I'll link this down below. But basically, I just chop up some onion really fine. I add that to a bowl along with some buttermilk, some regular milk, and then the dressing calls for lemon juice and white vinegar. Uh, salt, pepper, and sugar. I did use a monk fruit sugar substitute just to cut down on the sugar and the calories, and it turned out fine. I also added some mayo in there. And obviously, if you really don't want to cook, grab a potato salad from the deli or coleslaw from the deli. No one needs a hero. You just need a side with your barbecue chicken <laughs> sandwiches. So I went ahead and put my bagged coleslaw mix in there, and that turned out really good. Uh, it holds and is great for meal prep in the fridge. And then I also had some broccoli on the side because my kids are not huge fans of coleslaw, although Connor did try it and does like it now. So here's my chicken, barbecue chicken breast after I removed that from the oven. My fries, here are the dogs begging for some food. <laughs> um, I always like to keep fries in the freezer because it is a super simple and quick side for dinner. I served up my coleslaw. The kids got broccoli and I just put the barbecue chicken breasts on some buns that I had on hand and we served those with the fries and the broccoli and the coleslaw and bing bang boom, we had a super quick dinner uh, that was really, really yummy. If I barely have time to cook dinner, you can also bet that I don't have time to go to the store and pick out glasses. And that is why I wanna thank Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video. The best part about Warby Parker is that their glasses start at just $95 and you guys, I have so many pairs of Warby Parker glasses. I'm obsessed with glasses. I feel like they are an awesome fashion accessory. And so I love having multiple pairs to go with my different outfits and earrings. Warby Parker offers everything you need for happier eyes. They have eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. And you can shop with them either online or in stores. You can try Warby Parker's free home try-on program order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free. I really love this because like I said, you can try them on in the comfort of your own home and you can even get opinions from your family and friends. When you order the home try on, there is no obligation to buy and it also includes a prepaid return shipping label. So it's super easy to just stick that onto the box and mail it back. You guys can try five pairs of glasses at home for free by going to warbyparker.com slash Jen. I'll have a link in the description box below. If you have an iPhone, you can also download the Warby Parker app and it will allow you to do a virtual try on, which is so freaking cool. You can also get 15% off if you purchase more than one pair of glasses or prescription sunglasses. So if you guys need any sort of eyewear, go to warbyparker.com slash Jen. I can personally vouch for their service as I've been using them for years, even before I worked with them here on YouTube. 
highly, highly recommend as it is so time-saving and convenient. So next up, I have these chicken Parmesan cutlets that I actually found at Aldi. And I was excited to try them because I knew they would make a really quick dinner. So on the side, we're gonna have some buttered egg noodles and some fresh broccoli. So I started out by boiling my water and I'm just gonna add my egg noodles to that. This is a super simple side and kids love them and they also make great leftovers. I'm gonna take my broccoli and I'm just cutting that into my salad spinner that I have in the sink with some cold water to give that broccoli a wash. To make this even easier, you could use frozen broccoli. And then I just took the chicken cutlets and the directions said to pan fry them in some oil. So that's what I did. They cooked up pretty quickly. And then I also uh, finished cooking my egg noodles. I'm gonna go ahead and toss those with some some butter and salt for the chicken cutlets. I gave these to the kids plain with just a lemon wedge on the side. Adam had his with a little extra marinara on the top and some mozzarella cheese, sort of like a chicken parm. Uh, but this is obviously just an idea. You can use any frozen chicken, but this turned out really quick and easy. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to try out the Siete Carnitas seasoning. I actually got this at the airport in Austin when I was in Texas last week. So this is a slow cooker spice and it says you can have it with pork, chicken, or jackfruit. So I've got a boneless pork roast here and one onion. Um, the, the recipe on the back says to slow cook the meat and then add the seasoning packet. If I was doing it myself, I would probably just add it when I added the pork, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm just gonna follow the recipe <laughs> for once. So let me get this in the slow cooker. I did season the pork just a little bit with some seasoned salt because I didn't wanna cook it without <laughs> any seasoning in there. I'm adding half a cup of water and then we're just gonna cook this on low uh, for eight hours and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so our pork has been cooking all day. I'm gonna remove it, it's falling apart so that's good. I'm just gonna remove it to this bowl so I can strain out the liquid. You can see how easily this shreds up. If you cook a big piece of meat in your slow cooker and it doesn't shred this easily, it actually means it hasn't cooked quite long enough yet because as it cooks, obviously the meat breaks down and it's easier to shred. May I help you? <laughs> And then this is a fat separator. So I'll link this down below. I find it a very useful tool, especially when slow cooking things. So basically you pour the broth into here. It strains the solids up top. And then as you can see, the fat rises. So when you pour out the liquid, you just get the broth at the bottom. So I'm gonna pour about a half, half of a cup of that back, Murphy, <laughs> back into the slow cooker and then mix that with the seasoning. I went ahead and saved the rest of the broth just in case I needed to add some more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this up. I have the slow cooker on warm just so it can um, stay warm and heat back through. I'll go ahead and taste this, make sure it doesn't need any salt or anything. And then we gotta get our toppings ready. This is my new favorite kitchen tool. I actually bought it because I wanted a safer uh, mandolin slicer, but it came with a cheese grater and it works like so awesome. So basically it comes with these plates that fit over the top of this container and I just found it super useful for shredding cheese because it comes with a container and everything can go in the dishwasher. It is fantastic. I'll look at link it down below. So now I'm just going to go ahead and cut up my toppings for the tacos. Obviously this is a little bit more cooking than the other recipes that I've shown so far. However, I do find crock pot cooking to be really easy, especially because it doesn't require a lot of time hands on. I mean, obviously you have to spend some time assembling and getting the dinner ready, but it pretty much cooks itself during the day. So win, win there. So I took some tortillas and I heated those up in a dry skillet. I added some sour cream, some of the pork, which turned out so good, some cheese, some salsa. I diced up some onions, Adam likes onions on his tacos. And then this was his plate. And then I'm going to show you um, how I had mine. The great thing about a meal like this is that you can really customize it to feed all the people in your family, regardless of what they like. And now let me show you what I'm having. So this is a kind of like a burrito bowl. I had some rice in the freezer. So I heated that up in the microwave. And then also from the other night, I had 
some of this corn and bean mixture. So I put some of that in there. I added cheese, lettuce, sour cream, tomato, salsa. This is one of my favorite meals. In fact, Adam was just making fun of me because he said all I eat is bowls, but I digress. Okay, on this night, I decided to make a ravioli bake. So here are some very poor cell phone pictures, but you can basically see how I took some jarred marinara sauce and I layered that in a nine by 13 dish with some frozen cheese ravioli. That is gonna go in the oven. And then while that's in the oven, I'm gonna brown up some sausage. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. In fact, uh, Recently, I used beef ravioli and I didn't have to have any meat on the side, but my husband is like one of those people that wants to have meat with every meal. So whatever. <laughs> anyway, so I made the cheese ravioli bake the sausage on the side. This ravioli bake, I'm telling you, it comes together so quick and it is super kid friendly. Definitely try it. I'll link the recipe down below, although it's not really a recipe. And I'm making a salad on the side of this. So you saw me cutting up some lettuce. I'm cutting up some red peppers. Obviously to make this a lot easier on the nights when I don't feel like cooking, I use a bagged salad or I don't chop up as many fresh veggies, but this is where uh, sort of that meal prep can come in really handy and not even meal prep, but just like ingredient prep, right? So if you have, um, you know, produce and veggies that are washed up already in your refrigerator, it's super easy to put a salad together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up uh, all the toppings for my salad. I kind of wanted to make this sort of like an Italian inspired antipasto salad. So I chopped up some salami, some cucumbers. I'm also chopping up some pepperoncini finely, some green onion, and then I also added some mozzarella pearls to the bowl and some ham. We're gonna have that with some Olive Garden Italian dressing. We had the cheese ravioli bake, and that turned out really good. I also made some crescent rolls on the side, which is always super quick and everyone loves them. I also made like a little veggie and cheese plate for the kids. They really enjoyed that. And then with the sausage, I just sliced that up and put it into a bowl so that anyone who wanted some could take some. And I had mine with a big salad on the side and this turned out really good. Everyone loved it and no one complained, which I always love. Okay, so another thing that I often cook when I don't wanna cook is soup and sandwich. So I have some chicken noodle soup. This is just good old Campbell's condensed chicken noodle soup that I reconstituted and then I'm heating up on the stove. Honestly, like you don't have to get fancy with dinner every single night of the week. No one's gonna give you a trophy for doing that. And what I find is sometimes the dinners that I throw together really quickly and that are really simple, my family likes them more and complains less. I don't know if you guys find that, but you can let me know in the comments below if you find that as well. So for sandwiches, I really like making sandwiches for dinner because obviously they're super quick and easy and I can just use what I have on hand and everyone can get what they like. So I assembled a ham and cheese sandwich that I'm gonna grill for Adam with some pepper jack cheese. And then I also had some grapes in the fridge to wash up. So I'm just gonna soak those in uh, my salad spinner and clean them up. And then here is the sandwich. I'm just grilling that on both sides. I do like to cover it with a lid just so everything can heat through and the ham is not cold in the middle. This was some uh, really good sourdough bread that I had on hand from Aldi as well. So that turned out really great. And then for the kids, I just made them turkey sandwiches. So uh, one is just turkey and cheese. And then Connor likes like a lot of different fixings on his. So on his, I put cheese and lettuce and ranch and pickles and tomatoes maybe. Isn't that the funny thing about like being... I don't know, I was gonna say being the mom, but not necessarily the mom, just like being the person who cooks in the house is like you get to know like what everyone likes. Like you know what they like on their sandwich, you know what they like on their burger. <laughs> it's like anyway, so I fixed all those up. Um I served this up on paper plates because hallelujah, I'm not a hero. We had some Doritos on the side, some pineapple, some grapes. Here's how that grilled ham and cheese it turned out for Adam. And then yeah, that was it. Super simple dinner and I had no complaints from the troops. Okay, so another dinner that I wanted to show you that I make a lot when I don't feel like cooking are these XCJ dumplings. So I'll link their site down below. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I actually found them through an Instagram ad and I've been buying their dumplings 
for a long time. They are so delicious and everyone loves them. They have several different flavors of dumplings and noodles and just all kinds of fun stuff on their site. Um, so basically you just steam these up on the stove. If you buy the starter pack, it comes with a bamboo steamer. And then in each package of dumplings come these parchment paper rounds so that the dumplings don't stick to the steamer. It's super convenient. Everything's right in the bag. So you just want to arrange these so that they're not touching. If they are touching, they will stick together and they're soup dumplings. So there's broth in them and you don't want to obviously have them stick together and tear or the broth will come out. So I'm going to go ahead and steam those. And then while that is steaming, I'm also cooking up some of the noodles. And then I decided to make a salad on the side. Again, if you wanted to make this easier, you could use a bagged um, like Asian style salad. I actually had some baby bok choy on hand. I really like making salads out of this. So this is looking a little bit uh, limp. So I have to rehydrate it in some cold water, but I'm just cutting it up and I'll go ahead and soak that. This is just some uh, lettuce pre-washed lettuce that I had in the fridge. So I'm just chopping that up into smaller pieces and putting that into a big salad bowl. I'll also put the bok choy in there. This is some cilantro that I am mincing up. I really like to put this in my Asian salads. It is delicious. Here are the dumplings as they're steaming up. And then for the salad, I also had a package left over from a salad kit that had some wonton strips and almonds in it. So I'm going to go ahead and dump those in there. And then I really like to put either mandarin oranges or like sectioned oranges on my uh, Asian sesame salads. They are really, really good if you've never tried it. So I'm just kind of taking the peel off of this and then I'm just going to section it up as best I can and add that to the salad bowl. Um, for the dressing for this, you can find a quick dressing online, like a sesame, you know, peanut dressing recipe. I actually had a bottle of sesame dressing on hand that I had gotten at Whole Foods a while back. So I'm just going to add that to the salad and toss that up. And this turned out out really, really good. So we had the salad for dinner and then these are the noodles from XCJ. They have different flavors and they're all really, really great quality. Um, everyone in my family seems to like them. So we had those along with the salad and then I served the dumplings uh, alongside with some of the chili oil and dipping sauce. If you get the dumplings from their site, they have um, a chili crisp and a scallion oil and a vinegar soy sauce that's really good. And then I also have these cute little dumpling bowls that I got on Amazon. So I'll link those <laughs> down below as well. But this was a really delicious dinner. Okay, so next up is BLTs. So this is something that I make honestly pretty often when I don't want to cook because I find that everyone likes them and it doesn't take very long at all. So I am actually cooking my bacon on the stove, but if you want to be quicker about it, you can put your bacon on a foil lined baking sheet and bake it in the oven. I usually bake mine at around 400 degrees for maybe 20 minutes. Just watch it and make sure that it doesn't burn. The other shortcut that I have for this particular meal is to use pre-cooked bacon that you can get at the store. It microwaves super easy. And again, when you don't feel like cooking, it's better than getting takeout, right? So I'm taking my tomatoes and I'm just slicing those up and putting them on a plate. When I make BLTs, I like to salt and pepper my tomatoes before I add them to the sandwich. I just find that it adds a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some salt and pepper to those. And then I did cut up some fruit and veggies on the side of this. So I I'm cutting up some fruit. I'm sorry, I'm cutting up some cucumber <laughs> here. And then I had some um, uh, fruit that was washed in the fridge. And then we also had some chips on the side. But those are just simple things that I always like to keep on hand to put on the side of soup and sandwiches or something like that. Um, anything that you can do ahead of time, obviously, is super helpful and it helps decrease that mental load of cooking, especially at the end of the night when you're tired and you don't want to do anything. So I toasted my bread. I added some mayo. I added some bacon, some tomato, and then I'm going to add some lettuce. And that is basically it. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys like to cook when you don't want to cook? Like, what are your 
kind of like shortcut meals. And thanks so much for watching today. Don't also forget to check out Warby Parker. If you need a pair of glasses or sunglasses or even contact lenses, I highly, highly recommend them. I'll have a couple more videos on the screen here that you can watch if you need some more dinner inspiration. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.